Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Scott Rechschaffen. I'm the Chief Knowledge Officer at Littler Mendelssohn. Um, Littler is an employment law only firm. We have 1,500 lawyers spread across 30 countries. Um, as the firm's Chief Knowledge Officer, and I've been doing this almost 20 years, I lead a team of about 55 people. Um, I spend a lot of time thinking about the practice of law. I'm actually paid to think about the future of legal practice. How do we get lawyers to do diff things differently? How do we re-engineer the way we deliver our services? And I'm, I also spend a lot of time looking at legal technology and looking at legal technology companies. And we heard the figures this morning about how much it is being invested. There are a lot of companies. And I don't know, I like to think that in 10 years, five years, three years, some of them will still be around, hopefully. But how do you pick which are the ones that really offer a service? I mean, when I talk to my lawyers about these and I show them these tools, they go, oh, that's nice. I'll use it once. And then they say, it's a shiny object. It'll just wind up on the shelf. So thinking about shiny objects got me thinking, of course, about toys. I've raised three boys and bought them a lot of toys over the years, including some of my favorites. And you know what? They hated them. They got really bored with them. Why? Because they do one thing. You know, if you want to see something spin around, you need the top. If you want to see something climb downstairs, you need the slinky. They want toys that, that do more than that, that trigger their imagination, inspire creativity, and there are toys like that. Toys that are tools. Toys that allow children to be expressive and imaginative and creative. Toys that even let children build other toys. And toys that grow with the child. This is um, James Bond's Aston Martin from Goldfinger, built out of Lego. My son built it a couple of weeks ago. My son is 26 years old. <laughs> and he gave up a weekend to build this. Um, OK, what does this have to do with the practice of law? Well, I think it has a lot to do with the practice of law. We need to find things that empower lawyers, not scare them. We need to find things that, give them, that are tools that they can use to cr find creative solutions to their clients' problems, rather than having to decide, should I go here, should I go there, which, which tool should I use? Let's empower the lawyers to create the products of tomorrow. I'm a big fan of expert systems. I think this is one of those tools. There are several others, uh, uh, document assembly, for example. But expert systems um, can give lawyers a tool like Microsoft Word, Excel, this is, this is the new generation of tools. Uh, I'm particularly fond of, of Neoto Logic's expert system, not just because they're a sponsor. Um, I think I was invited to talk first before they became a sponsor. Um, but their no-code software is something even a lawyer can use. It sort of debunks the whole notion that only coders can build applications. You have to know how to code. Um, so I was on a panel where someone said, do lawyers need to, you know, don't lawyers need to know how to code? And I said, I don't want lawyers coding any more than I want coders doing ERISA litigation. Um, think about it. In law school, traditionally, we teach lawyers how to read the law, analyze the law, and write a brief or write a memo. Now let's teach lawyers how to read the law, analyze the law, and build an application something that has multiple purposes. We can build practice wizards. We can build automated documents, intelligent decision trees to guide particularly junior lawyers through complex decision making. One of the first tools we built with an expert system was an independent contractor risk uh, assessment tool. And with this tool, it's, it works much like TurboTax. It takes the user through an interactive session. The user provides the inputs. The reasoning engine, which is based on hours and hours and hours of my subject matter experts feeding and training the logic, 
And then through that analysis, the software gives you a risk assessment. But not only a risk assessment, it gives you a report explaining what the risk factors are. And another report giving you remediation suggestions. We have clients who have built this into their onboarding process. They push it out to their procurement departments, to their hiring engagement managers, and say, if you want to onboard an independent contractor, you need to fill this out. Fill it out, first of all, so it saves time in the process. Also, so we document the factors that went into the decision making. And um, most important, that report I mentioned that explains remediation steps. Well, I don't know if any of you have deal with employment and independent contractors, but when a manager wants to engage an independent contractor and you in legal say no, what does the manager do? The manager argues with you. Everybody in the industry does this. And before you know it, you've spent two hours, you've wasted two hours arguing with the manager. With this report, you can send it to the manager and say, here, you want to remediate the situation, you want to make this person an independent contractor, here's what you need to do. We've done the same thing with overtime exemption. Um, you can go through a series and determine whether an employee can be treated as overtime exempt. I just read today that the DOL is about to release the new regulations on overtime exemption. We can reprogram, again, the beauty of no-code software. My lawyers can bring this up to date with the new regulations in a matter of hours. Um, we've built 20 more applications dealing in the areas of onboarding, pay practice, wage hour, leaves of absence, the, the issues most of our clients struggle with. We have document automation built in. It's, it's really spectacular. But here was my problem. At this point, I only had a couple of people using these tools. How can I push it out further? So I brought 14 of my attorneys, my KM attorneys, to our global service center. Neota sent some of their educational people, and we spent two days learning how to build applications. I even learned, and I'm pretty technologically hopeless. Um, and now I have 14 trained lawyers who are fanning out across the country. They're the proverbial hammers in search of a nail. Every day they call me up and say, I've got a great idea. This practice group needs expert system. You know, a corporate department wants a new intake expert system. It's, it's really, and the attorneys they're interacting with, they're really getting it. They're engaged. They're saying, wow. Uh, you're not just giving me something off the shelf. I can actually use this. I can modify it. I can make it meet my needs. Okay, great. What if we could get lawyers coming into our firm to already know how to do this? So last semester, in partnership with Neodologic and Cornell Law School, um, we taught a class on delivering legal services. Um, at uh, uh, Cornell Tech is a fabulous campus on Roosevelt Island. It's, it, if you get a chance to see it, it's really an amazing place. And as part of the class, we divided the students up into three teams, and we partnered them with legal service organizations. One dealing with um, housing discrimination, another one dealing with personal bankruptcy for uh, low-income individuals, and the third, accommodating service animals in the workplace. Over the course of 13 weeks, these students learned the software. They learned an area of law they weren't familiar with. They met with their clients and learned their needs and the needs of their clients, and they built applications. And in lieu of a final exam, we had a competition, Shark Tank-like competition between the three teams, and it was sensational. I'm telling you, to listen to law students talk about user interface and user experience and graphic design, it was, it was remarkable. And I have to tell you, I got an email just this morning from one of the women in the class, and by the way, we had more women in this class than men. And I think in terms of legal technology, that's critical. But I got a, a, an email from one of the women in the class. Uh, first of all, she and about three other women from the class participated in the Global Legal Hackathon um, this past weekend, and she was one of the, on one of the winning teams. And she emailed me this morning and said that she's really interested in legal technology. And knowing the Otis software, knowing how to build things in an expert system is opening doors for her. So it's really, really empowering. So what do I do next? Um, 
Will I have hundreds of lawyers building applications? I don't know, but I will have lots of lawyers identifying opportunities to build applications where we can enhance the delivery of legal services. We are so impressed with this, we formed a, a separate company to help us bring these products to market. It's called Compliance HR. And why did we choose to do this through a separate company rather than through the law firm? That's my next presentation. Thank you.